Okay, good afternoon, everyone. We are online. Of course, only 10 persons can be in the church building, but, but we are sure, sure that there are many, many persons, persons, not just in Trinidad and Tobago, who are honored. Let me take this opportunity to welcome you to St. Augustine Evangelical Bible Church, and we'll be referring to it as S-A-E-B-C. So when you hear that, you'll know it refers to um, our church. We are here, yes, for a sad occasion, but it's one that also gives us peace and joy because we know for sure where Roger is. And we are so thankful to God for his life, the life he lived from the 15th of January, 1955 to the, the 28th of July, 2021. And we give God thanks for him. Again, welcome. And we pray that as you are online, that you too will have reason and cause to celebrate with us the life of our brother, Raja Lailiang. Let's open with a word of prayer. Dear God and Heavenly Father, we thank you that we could come before you in the name of Jesus. And God, we are so thankful for Roger, Lord, and the life he lived, that he knew you, Lord, that he loved you, and that he loved others. And I pray, Lord, that as we celebrate his life this afternoon, yes, Lord, we are sorrowful that we will not see him again physically, but God, indeed, we give you a high note of praise for the way he kept his eye on you and how he loved others even when he was facing his challenges. And for that, we give you thanks. Bless our time together today, we pray. Be glorified and may we lift up hearts of gratitude to you even as we rejoice and celebrate the life of Roger. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we want to start by singing a chorus. This was one of Roger's favorite choruses. When he used to lead worship, this is one of the songs that he would normally start with. And it's a declaration of our faith and our belief in Jesus. So let me invite you to stand as we sing, I believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus I believe he is the Son of God I believe he died and rose again I believe he paid for us all And I believe he's here now Standing in our midst, here with the power to heal now, and the grace to forgive. Let's sing it again. I believe in you, Lord. I believe you are the Son of God. Let's tell the Lord that this afternoon. I believe you died and rose again. I believe you paid for us all. And I believe you're here now. Standing in our midst, here with the power to heal now. And the grace to forgive. Let's sing it again. I believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus. I believe he is the Son of God. I believe he died and rose again. 
I believe he paid for us all And I believe he's here now Standing in our midst Here with the power to heal And the grace to forgive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a great God we serve. You may have your seats as I invite Stephanie, Mrs. Stephanie Lyleong, to come and read for us 2 Corinthians 5, verses 1 to 10. After that, we will have the eulogy from Roger's brother, Don Lalyong, and from his good friend, Wayne Vera. Second Corinthians, chapter five. For we know that if our earthly house is this tent, if it is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, but eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed with our habitation, which is from heaven. If indeed heaven be clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we who are in this tent groan, being hard. <laughs> being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now, he who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who also has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. For we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well pleasing to him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. The word of the Lord. Thank you so much, Stephanie Lai Long. And now we have the eulogy. It's shared by Don Lai Long, his brother, and Wayne Vera, his good friend. Wayne, you can come a little closer. Thanks.
George Roger Lai Leung. Came into this world on the 15th of January, 1955. His entry into this world was a difficult one for his mother, as he was premature. He was so small that his mother brought him home, wrapped in a yard of cotton. His siblings could only peep at him, but were not allowed to touch him. Roger, however, grew up to be a loving, lively child. And like all his other siblings, he had his share of the chores of the household. He attended El Sico Government Primary School and St. Joseph Government School. Together with Carl, Earl and Carl, his sister, him. When the family moved to Curep, he attended the Curep Educational Secondary School, where he made some lasting friendships. His warm and pleasant manner and his duty to complete whatever he pursued was appreciated very much by one of his friends, who was responsible for, his, for him for his first job at Fedkim, now Yara. He was employed in the customs department and worked there for many years until he was stricken with cancer of the marrow in his right arm. Chemotherapy and radiation therapy were not successful. He even traveled abroad to Atlanta for treatment, but was told that nothing could be done for him. He returned to Trinidad and continued working, but the pain was now unbearable. His sister Kim, now deceased, and Vashti, a member of his church, got a team of doctors to remove his right arm from his shoulder. Although Roger was now unemployed and unemployable, he was courageous. He bought himself a pickup and did a small transport business. He also turned to woodworking on this side. More trouble for Roger, he contracted Parkinson's disease and became unable to drive anymore. When his mom passed, help was required for Roger. Judy and Margaret were the ones who oversaw him at first, but his church congregation, especially Wayne Vera, Andrew and Daniel, they kept a close eye on him and were responsible for placing him at the Trinity View Home in Tonapuna for three years. Church members would go and exercise him sometimes by walking him in the park. Daniel, Max, Carl, Noel, and Lindsay used to take him fishing, although he only had one arm. And he enjoyed the outings. To the, he enjoyed the outings. He also enjoyed the outings to the health centers and clinics, which he attended. When Don transported, when I transported him to and from, to and fro, and on his last drive to the UTT in Charlie Village Center for his second dose vaccination by his son, Jason. Mr. George, as the men on the block addressed him, will be missed by all. He was quiet and respected by the members of his community in Nahoketa. But the Lord knows best. He knew when it was Roger's time to return home. We thank the Lord for lending him to us, and we know that he will receive him in glory. God bless you. Roger. The Little Things. Thank you, Lord, for little things. Like rays of hope a smile can bring a clasping of a helping hand, the soothing words, I understand. 
the warmth of sunshine after rain, I sign a sign of comfort after pain. A friend who stays through trials and tears, the peace they give to calm our fears. For all his mercy and his love, when prayers are answered from above. Oh, thank you, Lord, for little things that help us soar on eagle's wings. Good evening. I'd just like to ask you to join with me in the celebration <clears throat> of the life of Roger Lai Leung. He was a member of the St. Augustine Evangelical Bible Church as of July 1982. That would have been approximately 39 years. So you can understand this was home. The people here were family. Just bear with me. Roger wore many hats. Roger served as a deacon from 1997 to 2004, approximately seven years. He honored God with his service. He served as a worship leader. He served as a backup singer. And he was part of our senior choir. He accompanied the choir when the choir went to Barbados, St. Lucia, and Dominica. Now I want to go into a little detail. You know, our choir is a very active choir in that we have concerts, Easter programs, Christmas programs. And what that meant was you needed to be committed, you needed to be dedicated, you needed to, to be disciplined. And Roger showed all these qualities. He was committed and dedicated to what he was doing, which was serving God. And I want to, you know, touch a little bit on the trip to Dominica. When he was going to Dominica, he shared something with me. When he was asked to go, he said, Wayne, you know, I'm not feeling well, but um, they have asked me to go to Dominica on the tour to share, you know, the, the singing and the praising of God and, and witnessing to others. I told him, I said, Roger, if you're not feeling well, you don't need to push yourself. And I'm sure that if you let them know that you're not feeling well, they will understand. He didn't respond right away. And then a few days later, Roger told me, he said, Wayne, I'm going to Dominica. I just said, OK. But what was encouraging is when he came back from Dominica, he shared. He said, you know, he had the opportunity to share his testimony. And in doing so, you know, after service, he said that different people came to him and were encouraged. But there was one guy in particular that came to him, and he said, you know, I'm really encouraged by your testimony because that guy was facing some challenges himself, just like what Roger did. And Roger was encouraged by that. The reason I'm saying this is that Roger had challenges, but he allowed, never allowed it to get in his way. He always put the Lord first and put himself after. Roger also served as an usher over the years, 
a, as I was telling them, you never really stop being an usher. And the reason for that is, you know, even when he was in the home and I'd bring him in the morning, he would stand by that door there with me. And he would wait until somebody else comes, and then he would come inside. So he never moved away from being an usher. And I remember even when he was sorting things out to go to the home, he brought a little piece of cardboard with a little plastic on it. And on that piece of cardboard was marked the word usher. And that, you could have seen the age on it. So that would have been from a long, long time ago. Roger also served in the Guyanese ministry when they were going to Guyana. He went on the missionary trips with these guys. And he went for about five or six years. And let me tell you, going to Guyana is not a walk in the park. It's by no means easy. And you know Roger have his challenges, but that didn't hinder him. Roger would sit on the tree of trucks, nothing to hold on to, stand up in a bus, and I'm talking about rough roads going through the jungle, and he had to stand in the bus, there was no seating room. And there was one instance where he had to move from a little boat to climb into a bigger boat, which was challenging, and he was literally thrown into the bigger boat. But Roger, the trooper that he was, he didn't let that be a hindrance to him, and he enjoyed every minute of it because he went there to serve his God. He went there to serve for what he believed in, to tell others the good news. <clears throat> he also served on the Benevolent Committee. Roger was in the Benevolent Committee for about 15 years. Roger's love for people and, and, and love for, for, for those who have the need to be able to serve. And L Roger was very, very committed. And even as I'm, I'm, I'm talking about this, like, I, I'm now speaking to Myrna, one of the ladies on the committee, and I know she would very much like to have been here today to share with us. Myrna, Vashti, um, Angela, and myself. And we had a good run. We, around Christmas time, Roger used to look forward to it. We'd get up early in the morning. We made our plans. We'd, we'd have, you know, the company would have come up with something up where we would purchase groceries and what have you. And we would head out. And Roger and I would always be the one first in, a, in, in the grocery in, in a Mirage um, wholesale. And he and I, we would get two trolleys. And we would start putting the heavy stuff inside the trolleys until the ladies come. We didn't use to wait on them. And Roger was always versatile. He didn't used to want a hand out of somebody helping him. He was capable of helping himself, you know? What is interesting, as I was saying, I was calling the, the names of the people from the Benevolent Committee who would have liked to have been here. Let me say this. Today, I want to let you know that I am standing in for the whole of the St. Augustine Family Church. Because Thinking about it, if we weren't in this situation, how packed this church would have been. That is how much of an impact he made on the lives of people here. Roger had two vehicles. He had a, a car before he had the, the truck. And Roger used to use his personal vehicle to go and pick up kids in Maloney and bring them to St. Augustine for church. And after church, he will take them back home. There were times there were two sisters that live in Brazil village. And if you know where Brazil village is in relation to where St. Augustine is, you know it's very far. And even after service, he will take these girls back home, right? So he was always committed. And nothing was too big for Roger to do. Nothing. Nothing was too big for Roger to do. As his brother Don mentioned, Roger did a bit of carpentry. And you know what is interesting? I remember witnessing myself. Roger had a hammer drill, and I'm sure that hammer drill could have been a little more than a foot long. And with one hand, think about it, he would take his, the, the drill, put it between his leg, and, and put on the, the, the bit, screw it up on thing. Then he will take the bit in his left hand, like this, and bring it up in the air, and then point it, and, and drill. And he used to help a lot of people in La Hoketa with those prefab houses, to bore holes in the wall and that kind of thing, you know? Roger also liked sports. He liked cricket, he liked fishing, of course, and all fours. Now, he liked to listen to cricket. For instance, Roger would say, when you're listening to the cricket, 
I would tell her, I say, no boy, you're not listening. I say, my heart not so good. When he score come, my heart might give out and things. So he used to laugh. And um, <laughs> he would listen and then he would say, you hear the score? And he would come and tell me the score. Well, you like the fish. Now think about fishing. Somebody that to have two hands, how difficult it is for somebody with two hands to fish. Think about Roger fishing with one hand. He used to pull the nylon with one hand, put it in his mouth, bite it with his teeth, and pull again. And in the shallow water, shallow water, he used to be able to pick up the fish for himself. In the deep, he would get help. That is to tell you, he never let anything hold him back from doing what he wanted to do. I remember um, just after Roger passed, my wife and I, we were sitting down and we were reminiscing and sharing, you know, our, our life with Roger and Roger being at our home. And my wife was saying, you know, it's, it's, it's a pity. All the years Roger have been coming and we didn't have any pictures of, of, of that event, you know. But in spite of that, there was a time we went to Barbados and in Barbados, we were able to get some pictures. And Daniel and I used to always rib him about, we would tell him we will um, find somebody for him. You know what I mean? Always tell him we will fix him up and that kind of thing. But you would realize by now we were never able to do that. Um, I just want to share just two instances in Barbados. <laughs> I'm getting some signals. Um, but um, we had an opportunity to go sailing. And Rodia was very enthusiastic about going sailing. And um, when we went out, my niece took us to a place where these celebrities would, would be and that kind of thing, and she was showing us. So we decided we'll take a dip there. And um, while we were deciding to go into the water, I saw Roger sat down. And um, he, I said, what happened? You're not going in the water? He said, um, no, I don't think um, I'll be going in the water. I said, why? He said that um, if I go down in the water, I wouldn't be able to come back up. Now, I think I went by faith here to let her say, Roger, don't worry. I said, Daniel and I will push you up on the boat. And sure enough, well, he eventually went in the water, and sure enough, we were able to push him back up on the boat. Just quickly, he entered the home in, in Nettlesville, he spent some time there, and then from there he went back home. From back home, they, we had a visit, somebody taking care of him, then that person left. We had to get the next person to take care of him. And that was left. And then we was in a quandary. And eventually, Vashti and myself, we took Roger to see a place called Trinity View. And we looked at it. Roger liked it. Made the contact with, with Dawn. And Dawn and Roger made the arrangements. And that was, that's where Roger was in his last days. And he was in and out of hospital in many last days. Um, in closing, I would, just like, I would like to say one thing and then read a portion of scripture. You know, it is said that when a stone is thrown into a lake, it quickly disappears from surface, but it leaves a series of ripples that spreads across the lake. And I would like to remember Roger in this way. I know Roger has impacted many lives, not just in Trinidad, but across the shores. And he has blessed a lot of people. And even after he has gone, he will still be remembered. And it shows us that we need to look at how we live how ought we to live? We ought to live our lives in such a way that those who know us but don't know God will come to know God because they know us. I would just like to read a portion of scripture from 1 Philippians chapter 4 from verses 13 to 18. It goes like this. It says, Brothers, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him, according to the Lord's own word. We tell you that we who are still alive, who are left till the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who are falling asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. 
Therefore, encourage each other with these words. My last remarks are, as we had our little fun, Roger, we will just call that George. Come on, you pass through here, from here, you pass through from here, and you go around there. Everybody come join the line. Let's make a line first. Let's make a line. You go first in the line, and everybody go behind one at a time. And we're going to sing a little song. Wait, 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 Thank you so much. Wonderful memories. Before we have the sermon for the afternoon, let's stand together and sing, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Pardon for sin. Pardon. 
pardon for sin and a peace that endureth thine own dear presence to cherish. You may have your seats. So we now come, come now to this sermon. And we are all sorrowful, of course, that Raja has passed away. But we have, as we said before, peace and a joy. Because we know for sure that he's right now enjoying himself in the presence of the Lord. Someone put it this way on our SABC men's chat. He said, a tribute to our brother Roger. We loved him dearly. He was a friend and mentor as a young man in my teens. He shared with me his love of fishing. He also shared his many projects with me, but most of all, he shared his love of Christ. He would always invite me to join him as he shared God's love in tangible ways to the community. He was faithful to the end. I can still hear him singing in the choir. Goodbye, Roger, until we meet again. As you heard earlier, men from the SABC's men's group, we took turns nearly every day to visit Roger, to talk with him, exercise with him, just to spend time with him. Sadly, that had to stop when restrictions came into being in March of 2020 owing to the, the COVID-19. This afternoon, I want us to get into this message by stating that all of us need to learn to listen better. Do we all agree that it's good to listen when someone tells us something important that's for our own good? Sometimes people just don't listen. Persons don't listen for, for various reasons. Some persons don't listen properly, so they don't understand what they're supposed to do. So a man comes to work, a security man comes to work drunk, and he said, but sir, you told me I wanted tight security. A policeman, they call him, why are you still at work? At home, he said, I'm, and I'm sleeping, why? He said, well, you told me I'm working undercover. Some policemen were up in a mango tree eating starch, mango after starch, mango. And somebody asked him, what are you doing there? He said, well, we are special branch. People sometimes make mistakes because they don't listen carefully to instructions. On the other hand, some persons don't listen because we want to do our own thing. As the old people used to say, stick brick in your ears. Some Tiantec workers went up to Marcus to work on a project. The supervisor warns them not to bathe. Two hours later, he goes up to Marcus to check on them, only to see them in the water. I thought I told you not to go into the water. Boss, we from TNTech. We check in the current. Now, that might be an amusing situation, but in real life, the more important a person is, the more we should listen to him or her when they speak. So when Jesus speaks, it is in our best interest to listen. Roger always listened to what the Lord said to him. Roger always gave persons his undivided attention and listened to them and to listen to what they had to say. This morning, 
I want us to look, this afternoon, I want us to look at Luke chapter 12, verses 15 to 21. In it, Jesus is speaking to a crowd. He tells them some very important things. Jesus, at the start of his speech, tells the crowd to be on its guard. Before he goes on to tell the crowd a parable, he makes two important points that are still relevant to us today. He makes the first point in Luke chapter 12, verses 15a. He says, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Yes, there are all types of greed. There's a greed of wanting what someone else has. There's a greed of never being satisfied with what we have, but always wanting more and more. There's a greed of wanting something so badly that we do wrong things in order to get it. There is a greed of wanting something so much that it consumes all of our passions and desires. There's a greed of thinking that material things will satisfy the deep, deep need of the soul. Jesus says to that crowd over 2,000 years ago, and I know he's speaking to us now, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. All of us who truly knew Roger know that he was not a greedy, grasping person. Roger cared more about people than possessions. Roger was a contented, non-demanding person. Let us all ask ourselves this question this afternoon. Am I a greedy, greedy grasping, discontented kind of person? That's the first point Jesus makes. We must be on our guard against all kinds of greed. The second point Jesus makes is this. He says in Luke 12, 15b, a man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. Note what he says. A man's life does not consist. Acquiring abundance of material possessions should not be the driving force of any of our lives. Nothing is wrong if we acquire it through legitimate means. But if that is the driving force of our lives, we are on the wrong track. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. Someone was making chicken roti that also included pumpkin, chana, and potato, and some mango. When he proudly put it on his table, people started to stoop. He forgot the curry, he forgot the chicken, and he forgot the dalpuri. Imagine a curry chicken roti without chicken, curry, or dalpuri. Imagine, even worse, building our lives and forgetting the most important thing. <clears throat> of what then? Does our life really consist? Our life consists of taking proper care, first of all, of our souls. Our souls are our most valuable possessions. It is the only thing we take with us into our lives after death. Jesus said in Mark 8, 36, 37, What good is it for a man to gain the whole world, yet forfeit his soul? Or what can a man give? in exchange for his soul. What does it gain a man if he gains everything but loses his soul? Our life really consists primarily of taking proper care of our souls. A life that consists of real and close relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ. That is taking proper care of your soul. And having a genuine care for others is what it is really all about. Roger, despite his physical challenges, made sure that he took proper care of his souls. He loved Jesus Christ dearly. Additionally, if our lives are full of joy, love, peace, thankfulness, gentleness, kindness, etc., we will truly be living. If what I just said is true, then Roger, despite his self challenges, etc., truly lived. Can we say the same thing about ourselves this afternoon? On the other hand, if we are cruel, selfish, unkind, proud, deceitful, greedy, rash, prone to fits of rage and anger, full of unforgiving, unforgiveness, bitterness, and resentment, then we may have a lot of material possessions, but we are really poor. We may be the best looking man or the most beautiful woman, but inside we are ugly. We may be the most intelligent and the most educated person, but in reality we are a fool. Now, none of the things that I talked about there are bad of themselves. But if we put those things above loving God and loving people, then that's what we are. We may be the most talented person around, 
but it counts for nothing if you don't love God and if you don't love people. In the parable that Jesus tells a crowd, he tells them about a man with a plan. Things worked well for the man. Things worked out well for him. Verse 16 says, The ground of a certain rich man produced a good crop. He thinks about things. That's good again. Verse 17 says, He thought to himself, What shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. And so he comes up with a plan. That's good. Verse 18, <clears throat> This is what I'll do. I'll tear down my bands and build bigger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. He even has a retirement plan. That's good. He says in verse 19, And I'll say to myself, You have plenty of good things laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. This man, this man does some commendable things. But please note, however, that in his plans, there is no mention of God and there is no mention of helping others. The man has a plan, but in the parable, God has the final say. In our lives too, God always has the final say. God says two things to the rich man, and it will do all of us some good to apply it to our own lives as well. First thing he says in verse 20, but God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Life is a gift, not a guarantee. Life is not a right. There's the certainty of death. None of us knows when we will die. But we know we all have to die. Some of us try to de deny the reality of death by not thinking about it. But death is one thing that we are sure will happen to all of us. The second thing God says to the man in the parable, he does it in the form of a question. Verse 20b. <clears throat> then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? We see here the short-term value of material possessions. Now, it is good for parents, etc., to pass on things, property and other things to their children. But how much more valuable if they also, also pass on to them values such as character, choosing right over wrong, decency, respecting others, taking care of others, and loving God. If, if we can teach our children that, along with providing for them materially in the future, right, we are on the, on the proper road. We see here the short-term value of material possessions. At the end of the parable, Jesus concludes by telling the crowd, and by extension us, verse 21, this is how it will be with anyone who stores up things for himself, but is not rich towards God. We cannot afford to forget about God. Some of us have put God on the back, stone, at the back burner of our lives or even off the stove entirely. Some of us have developed a hard heart. We have developed a hard heart so that when Jesus speaks to us, we either can't hear or we will not hear. When Jesus speaks, I repeat, we must listen. <laughs> the most important thing in our lives is our relationship with God. And that was true of Roger. Jesus says to us this afternoon in verse 21, this is how it will be with anyone who stores up things for himself but is not rich towards God. Jesus says in Matthew 8, 90 to 21, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And I'm urging all of us to live like Roger and make our treasure God and helping others, not just material possessions. When Jesus speaks, we must listen. What is the most important thing in our life this afternoon? Is it pleasure? Is it possessions? Is it having power? Is it pride? Or is it a personal relationship with God through His Son, Jesus Christ? And prioritizing people above possessions? Which one is it? Which one defines us? We, we look back at Roger's life and the things that we have said about him, none of them was untrue. You know, sometimes in a funeral, people try to big up somebody and, 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 and even fabricate some things about them, you know, because in a funeral, you don't say bad things about the people, about a person. You all know what I'm talking about? 
But everything that was said about Roger was absolutely true. Is that true of us? If Roger could speak to us this afternoon, I am sure he will have some things to say to all of us. Of course he can, can't, but I'm sure he will. He would ask, have we taken time to set our souls right with God? If you have heard him this after, if you could have heard him this afternoon, Roger will say, surely say to each of us, please make sure you accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. That's the first thing you need to do. When we stand before the Lord, he will not ask how big our house was, how great we advanced academically, how famous we were. Nothing is wrong with those things. But if those things are more important than our soul, when we stand before God, he's not going to ask us about those things. He will ask us if we gave our hearts and lives to Jesus Christ. If our spiritual life was what is more important than anything else. He will ask us if we put possessions, position, etc. above people. Roger always genuinely cared about people and always put people above money and material things. Let us not plot and scheme and step on other people to get material things and forget relationships. It is about God and relationships. When we stand before the Lord, he will ask us how we treated people. Finally, if Roger were here today, he would ask us if we are thankful, gentle, kind, considerate, contented, compassionate, peace-seeking, loyal persons, because that's what he was. His life overflowed with these characteristics, and by God's grace, we should too. Yes, as I said at the start, we are indeed sorrowful. We are indeed grieving that Roger has passed away. But we have a peace and a deep joy because we know for sure that he is right now, right now, enjoying himself in the presence of the Lord. What we see here is not the real Roger. It's a Roger that might, we might remember in terms of our physical memory of him, but it's not the real Roger. Right now, Roger is in the presence of the Lord because he knew Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. Will that be true of us when our time come? This is not a home-going service. Sometimes people call it a home-going service. This is a home-going service. He's gone already. He's with the Lord. This, but this here is just the physical remembrance of him. So let's love God and let's love people. If you're part of a family... Right? The Lilyongs and the, the different persons, the Skinners, etc., etc., and all the others, are you loving each other? Or are there things that are keeping you apart? That's never the way of God. God wants love first for Him and love for others. Amen. Amen. We are now going to be treated to a special from the choir. And as you heard, Roger was very, very much a part of the St. Augustine Choir. And this was one of the songs that Roger loved to sing. So, of course, the choir can't be here physically. Only 10 persons are allowed. But we have something online for us to listen to.
Thank you so much, choir. And we want to lift our hearts this afternoon in total praise to God for what he did in Roger's life and for having gifted us with him for so many years. The family put these balloons here because we live in unusual times. There can only be 10 persons here and only six from the family. You'll notice that I almost did everything. That's not normally how we will do a service, a funeral service, but it's just a few of us from our church could be here and only a few of the family. These are unusual times because of COVID. But these balloons, at, as, a, as a remembrance to those, especially those who are away, who cannot be here, the family wanted these balloons up because of that. And for even those who, from Roger's family and his close friends, who cannot be here. But we give God thanks. We are confident that he always knows what he is doing. And so we want to have a closing prayer. And at the end of the closing prayer, we will have some music so that those who are here can again take a last look at the physical remains of our dear brother Roger. And then we will again leave here to go to the Tunapuna Cemetery. But again, only 10 persons are allowed to be there. It's really unfortunate. You know, it's, it's kind of heartbreaking to know that that has to be the case. But bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. We give him total praise this afternoon because he knows what he is doing. All of you are here who agree with that. And if you're even online, if you agree with that, that God knows what he is doing, just show by raising your hands this afternoon. God knows what he is doing. He's a good God. So let's pray. Dear God and Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity that we had this afternoon to be at this service that, that celebrates the life of Roger. Lord, he's gone. He's gone physically, but he will always have a place in our hearts. We thank you so much for his life, Lord. Lord, the example of his love for you and his love for others and his care and concern for others that they will come to know you as Lord and Savior. And also, if they're in situations of need, his compassion to help them. Lord, his willingness, Lord, his gentleness, his loving, quiet manner, Lord, we'll always remember it. And we give you thanks, Lord, that he has lived his life. And Lord, he may not have the celebrity, Lord, and the fame of some of our Trinidad icons who passed away recently. He may not have achieved many things that many people put as a priority. And Lord, some of these things are important, but we thank you that above all else, Lord, he loved you and he loved people. And Lord, after all is said and done, that is the one true thing that really sets a man apart, sets a person apart. So I thank you for him, Lord. Bless and keep us all, we pray. We honor you, we worship you, bless you, and give you thanks. You are a good God. Thank you, Lord, that we could have had this time together to celebrate the life of Roger. Now that he's gone, Lord, may we always, by your spirit, seek to live, to love you, and to love others. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So we're going to give a time for persons just to 
uh, come view the body and then go on. Um, normally, somebody from the family will be there to greet you and, you know, but because again of the restrictions, we, right, we just ask everybody just to come. So let's come from this way and then go this way. All right, so let's come from this way. God bless you. Brother Roger Lyle Young. Let's welcome him. Good night, good night. I'm here to share my testimony with you and that you can know that if Christ could do it for me, he could do it for you too. I grew up in the Pentecostal church and grew up. Not to say anything bad about the Pentecostal church. It's a good church, but my mother went there and I grew up there. I went to Sunday school every Sunday morning. I went to PBS. I knew about God, but I didn't know God personally. It took, as soon as I was able to leave home and do my own thing, I left and I went, went and do my own thing. I went to parties, I drank alcohol, lime, until one day I got a pain in my shoulder. And I went to the doctor, the doctor told me it was 
a tumor, giant size tumor, giant cell tumor in the bone of my shoulder. And um, I spent about nine days in the hospital doing a biopsy. Then I went, I went to to do the biopsy, and they said that it showed that I had a tumor. But when coming out of the hospital, what I did, I was home convalescing, getting better. I had radiation. I was going through that period of radiation. I was home getting, um, getting better. Some guys came around on Sunday evening from the evangelical church. And I felt God had something for me to do there. He had to use me. So I went, as soon as I was better, better enough to walk, I went to church there, and God used me in a mighty way. I've been to Ghana five times, into the interior. I've been witness, witness, witnessing wherever the choir goes, wherever I go, tell people that Jesus Christ can save you, not just physically, emotionally, can save you totally. I just want to know, you to know if he can do it for me, he can do it for you. Amen.